Hello everyone, this is Five and welcome to the Curve My Sideshow Toy Review. And today, sorry, we're looking at the 2008 release by Hasbro of the G.I. Joe celebrating the 25th anniversary vehicles and action figures review. And today's vehicles and action figures review, we're looking at the Cobra Fang with the Cobra Pilot and the Cobra Claw with the Cobra Air Viper. Now, I got this straight from eBay, and this is actually a very costly price to get it because this is quite rare to get, especially on the mint and packaging. So I got this about $35, yes, $35, I want in a bit. And shipping would cost about $30 there, yes, a total of $65. I know, it's really expensive, but it's really hard to get this in the mint and box. Especially, this is a Aravarian version. Yes, this is a factory Aravarian version, where Two of the figures, as you can see now, are switched. The Cobra Air Viper is supposed to be piloting the Cobra Claw, and the Cobra Pilot is supposed to be piloting the Cobra Fang. That's the Aravarian version. Well, that's why I really wanted to get this. It's quite interesting, actually. Now, let's take a look at the inside of the packaging itself. We've got the Cobra Fang there, because due to the size of the rotors and the length of the vehicle itself, hence why the packaging is so huge, so you got the Cobra Fang that already placed into this situation where it's swooping down and trying to drop a bomb, which is very nice. Here we have the Cobra Claw swooping upwards into the sky. And in the background, we have a really nice image of the Cobra Island. Now, what you also didn't notice is underneath the Cobra Fang vehicle, there's the base stance itself. Very interesting. Now, let's take a look at the side of the packaging. One side of the packaging here shows the actual image of the Cobra Air Viper. I'm just going to call it as a Cobra Air Viper. Piloting the Cobra Claw. Now you also notice the Cobra Claw actually has four missiles. But for this actual toy itself, there's only like two missiles there. Here we have the Cobra Fang piloted by the Cobra Pilot. That's the actual image itself. At the top section, nothing that special. It's a GI Joe, and one side here, you got a smaller logo, Cobra Anime. Here, it's all empty except the, with the word GI Joe there. And at the back portion of the packaging, now you get to see more of the area of the images itself. First, we have the Air Viper next to the Cobra Fang, and the Cobra Pilot strapping onto the Cobra Claw itself. Let's take a look at the features of the Cobra Fang. It has turning rotor blades, movable flight control stick, pivoting nose gun, removable bomb, removable missiles, and turning tail fan. What they forgot to mention is the peg here, at the seat here, you can actually plug in the figure there. Because if it's mentioned on the Cobra Claw, it should mention on the Cobra Fang, but whatever. Here for the Cobra Claw, we have adjustable wingtips, rotating handle, removable bombs. I'm not too sure why they call it as bombs, considering they are missiles. And here is stated figure attaches to the vehicle, which they forgot to mention around here. And at the bottom section here, is the rest of the wave. We have the All Striker with Leather Neck and Shark Tooth with Deep Six. Very nice. And at the bottom here is the small little write-up stating Cobra Commander delivers a one-two punch from the sky when he unleashes the Cobra Fang and the Cobra Claw vehicles onto the G.I. Joe team. Agile and aggressive, this aircraft swoop in with savage fury to pummel the heroic team with weapons fire. Very nice. So, without further ado, let's open up this packaging so we can molest the toys. Be right back. And we're back of the ring figure and the rest of the stuff out from the packaging. Now, in this first part, we'll take a look at the Cobra Claw and the Cobra Viper Air Trooper. First things first, at the figure, he comes with a nice little file card. Now, the file card stated Air Trooper, code name Cobra Viper. Here, I got a nice little image of the Cobra Viper Air Trooper. File name, various, military specialty, pilot both place various countries. Now in the write-up, it stated Cobra Viper troopers are the backbone of the Cobra Legions. These frontline forces are heavily equipped and highly trained for battle. Within their vast ranks are subdivisions that have received focused preparation for land, sea and air combat. Cobra Viper air troopers are skilled pilots with a necessary reckless disregard for their own safety that makes them especially effective. 
They favor small lightweight aircraft like the Cobra Claw and the Cobra Fang. This let them display their piloting skills and allow them to get as close to their targets as possible, so they can enjoy every second of the chaos and destruction they deliver. At the bottom, possibly one of the Cobra Viper that quote this, stated, being a Cobra Viper trooper means you're the one that goes fist to fist, barrel to barrel with the G.I. Joe team. But isn't that the fun part? Very nice. And the back section here is all black. Now, for the figure itself, it comes with a few accessories. First, we have the 25th anniversary version of the Cobra base stand. You've got a nice little logo at the top there, as you can see here, with one single peg to hold the figure. And the nameplate there stated code name Cobra Viper. At the back here, stated 2007 Hasbro made in China. Now, for the rest of the accessories, it's basically the same as the single card version of the Cobra Viper or the comic pack. I'm going to bring out the comic pack version of the Cobra Viper. As you can see, both wear the same accessories. First, we have assault rifles, both in two different colors. The original version will have a white or dull white colored of assault rifle, and this version will have a black assault rifle. The vest is the part where it's interesting. Now, the original version, the entire thing is made of a black plastic material with two red straps that's painted, a red pair of well, grenades, the buttons in the middle has been painted in well, red, and also the belt is painted with a Cobra logo, as you can see there. And finally, there's also another Cobra logo that is shown at the corner here. But for this version, the entire vest is in grey plastic material with the straps painted in blue. Two of the grenades here is in green. There is no Cobra logo on this corner. However, the bottom section here, the Cobra logo is not painted at all, but the belt is painted in, well, blue. Which is kind of disappointing, actually. Next, we have the goggles. Depending on which version, the Hall Heroes would have the lenses painted in silver. But for the Comic Punk version, the entire goggle is not painted at all, it's just pure black plastic material. Except for this one, this one will have a grey plastic material for the goggle and the pair of lens are painted in dark red. Now, for the back portion, the backpack, the comic pack version will have a black plastic material of a backpack. For the Hall Heroes, two of the grenades will be painted in red. But for this version, the entire backpack is in grey plastic material with two of the grenades painted in green. Now, I wouldn't want to go too much detail on describing the figure's articulation and, well, on the detail mode there because basically the two figures are the same thing. There are no changes at all. However, if you want to see more in-depth look on the Cobra Viper itself, you may take a look at the review for the Pyro Patrol Conquest X30 with the Pyro Patrol Cobra Viper review. However, for this video itself, I'm going to talk about this figure's uniform color. Now, throughout my life, reading the Marvel's G.I. Joe comics and the IDW comics and any other G.I. Joe comics out there, I have never seen this uniform color before in my life. However, the animation, well, I can't actually vouch for that because I don't watch the animation well, that much. I read the comics more. So there is no way I have actually seen this brightly colored uniform color before. It's mostly in red, blue, and with a black helm. And speaking of the paint job of the figure itself, whatever you've seen on the original figure color, the uniform is in dark blue, and some parts are in red, and some parts are in black, as you can see there. But for the Cobra Viper Air Trooper, whatever is on the original figure is reverse colors. For starters, the, the majority of the uniform color was blue turned into red, was red turned into blue, was black turned into gray. The helmet, however, is interesting because this one has a black helm instead. The visor is still the same, it's still in silver. Other than that, the color opted for the Cobra Viper Air Trooper seem very weird, especially for an Air Trooper where you're flying in the sky and you're wearing bright red col colors. It's rather, well, it's rather silly actually. <laughs> I guess they are the one, first one to get shot in the skies. But then again, this has brought a decision to paint the figure into this really horrendous 
mix of colors I really didn't like the colors well it tends to grow on you but I really can't accept this brightly colored uniform and it's not in sync in colors when you see that half the uniform itself is in red and the helm is just in black so overall if I want to give a rating on the well the Cobra Viper Air Troopers paint job on the uniform I say it's not too bad but it's still pretty weird to see this kind of color so if I'm gonna give a rating on this I would say I'll give it a 4 out of 10 yes 4 out of 10 for the Cobra Viper Air Trooper I simply don't like the the choice of colors being put on the Cobra Viper itself for the Cobra Viper Air Trooper and the worst still is that there's not a single Cobra logo being found onto the figure itself so that's really really disappointing next up we'll take a look at the Cobra Claw now the Cobra Claw here comes with a nice little file card now the file card here stated Cobra Claw type area combat crowd designation glider weapons HE for high explosive dash 8 venom missiles flash fire bomb which does not include in the packaging now in the write-up stated the covert light area weapon claw bracket claw vehicle can be operated by a single pilot or used as an unmanned drone which they don't include in this packaging turbo jet engines give it speed and adjustable wingtips provide maneuverability essentially it's an amp glider with teeth and willingness to bite armed with venom missiles and a flash fire bomb which is not included in the packaging it glides in swiftly and sends a nasty message before moving aside to let the quote and unquote the big boys deliver the main attack the single pilot is completely unshielded from enemy fire he pilots the craft with fingertip reactive controls of superior maneuverability interesting and here we got a nice little image of the Cobra Claw man by the Cobra Viper Air Trooper and at the back here it's all black now in the packaging it also contained with a smaller instruction manual on one side is just pure blank on the other side here the majority of the section of the instruction manual uh, state the Cobra Claws well, techno babble however the bottom section is what's interesting as you can see in this section here is an instruction on where to attach all the parts like the handlebars and the missiles you will notice there are four missiles being shown in the picture but in the packaging there's only two here you got a nicer image of well a cobra claw with a cobra pilot attached onto the cobra claw this is not well it's supposed to be a cobra viper but whatever and also shown here four missiles here we have an instruction on where to place all the stickers and again it's showing four missiles not too sure why though they remove well two of the missiles now and speaking of the stickers here are the sticker sheet there are a total of 18 sticker sheets and they are pretty small if you compare the size next we'll take a look at the Cobra Claw itself the paint job now there is very little amount of paint job majority of the colors are just white or black the only paint job of for the Cobra Claw itself, the rest are plastic material color. The only paint job involved for the Cobra Claw is these two wing tips here. Let's take a look at the Cobra Claw's features. We have two missiles, Venom missiles, which is removable, as you can see here, and it's rather tight. There's four pegs, two pegs for per wing, but you can only attach one missile per wing, which is kind of disappointing there. Then we have the handlebars, which can actually it is articulated it goes up and down like so then we have a swivel that can swivel 360 degrees for the wingtips here however the moment you swivel it you also loosen the gap of the bottom section of the glider itself making the entire thing very loose and you also might pop off the bottom section so that's not really a good point furthermore that's all the paint job involved for the Cobra Claw I really wish they apply more paint job onto the Cobra Claw especially on the turret itself you got nice little details all the more details on the Cobra Claw itself you got the turret with the barrel itself you got a lot of wirings you got a lot of rivers being shown there at the bottom section here you got two of the engines being shown very nicely done with the details a lot of rivers on this section here paddings to help well secure the 
pilot itself, you got a large pick to pluck it at the back of the figure. But not a lot of paint job, which is rather disappointing. Now, another note is the mold itself. The mold is not used the well, it's not using the 1984 mode. This is completely new for the 2008, which makes a lot of sense because it's much more sleeker in design, much more smaller, and much more believable for a pilot, a human pilot, to actually, well, strap this and, well, jump off and fly. The original 1984 is way more bulkier. First off, this version does not have extended wings, unlike the 1984. There's two sections here no articulation on the back wing tips unlike the 1984 furthermore it has the 1984 actually has a pair of wheels on the side here which this version does not have and a large handlebar with two front wheels as well which can be removed when take off instead they replace the smaller handlebars shown here the handlebar is actually quite nicely done with the details there you got a throttle very nicely done but the details is nice, but there's not a lot of fun features to play around with the Cobra Claw, especially when it doesn't come with two missiles, a flash bomb, or the unmanned drone. Unlike the red Cobra Claw that is packaged with the Flak Cannon, the two-pack vehicle pack. Overall, the entire Cobra Claw is actually not bad. It's just that I really wish they put more stuff into it at least put more paint job into it. At least the, this version of Cobra Claw follows the original Cobra Claw in color. But playability wise, not really a lot of things that you can play around with it. So if I'm gonna give a rating out of it, I'm just gonna give it a nice five out of 10. Yes, a five out of 10 for the Cobra Claw. Next up, we'll take a look at the Cobra Fang and the Cobra Pilot. Be right back. And we're back, and this time we'll take a look at the Cobra Fang and the Cobra Pilot. Now, let's take a look at the Vegas file card. It comes with a nice little file card, and the file card stated Air Trooper codename Cobra Pilot. Here you got a nicer image of the Cobra Pilot himself. Top section here stated file name, various military specialty, gyrocopter pilot, both place various countries. Now in the write-up stated, Cobra Air Troopers are basic infantry quote and unquote grunts with wings. They are one step below Cobra Viper troops, bracket, who never let them forget this difference in rank, end bracket. So they always figure they have nothing to lose and everything to gain in battle. They are trained in ground and air combat, then provided with just enough pilot training to get them flying. Like ravenous mosquitoes on the summer's night, Cobra air troopers swoop down upon their targets. The only taunt is to prove their mettle so that the high, ra higher ranking officer, bracket, or perhaps Cobra commander himself, and bracket, notices their fearlessness and skill and promotes them. At the bottom, they quote, We swear absolute loyalty to our leader, Cobra commander. When he conquers the world, we'll also reap the riches of his conquests. Very nice. And on the other side, it's all black. Now, for the Cobra pilot, it comes with a nice little base stand, the 25th anniversary of the Cobra base stand. You got a nice little Cobra logo on the top with one peg for the figure to stand on. Now, at the nameplate, that stated code name Cobra pilot. At the back here, stated 2007 Hasbro made in China. Now, the Cobra pilot comes with three accessories. First, we have an old accessory from the 25th anniversary line, which is a submachine gun in all black plastic material. As you can see, there's a nice little scope on the top. You got a barrel, the magazine, the handle, and the trigger guard. Now, the problem with this submachine gun is that, well, our fellow Cooper pilot here cannot, or at least barely gripping the handle of the submachine gun. So if you nudge it a little bit, it's just gonna fall off. Then what's interesting is that because the figure is based on the Cobra Trooper or the Cobra Officer on the side of the tie there, there's where you place the dagger that equipped for well majority of the Cobra Troopers and Cobra Officers. He doesn't come with a knife. However, he does come with a pilot mask. Now this mask is actually nothing new. It's basically, well, reuses the same accessory from the Cobra Air Trooper that uses the jetpack 
but however they actually have a blue helm rather than this red helm here now there's a bit of paint job going on as, to, as you can see the logo here is painted in black the visor is painted in silver the mask itself is painted in black and on each side here is painted in silver the entire thing is made of a red plastic material now he doesn't come with his own helmet that's the problem there I really wish they do give him an extra helmet for that and then we have his web gear and this web gear is also nothing well nothing new it's the same web gear that packed in with the corporate officer two pack with the crimson guard as you can see they are both the same now the entire web gear is made of a dark blue plastic material there's a button on one side here and at the buckle here now the straps here on the top painted in really very leathery red very bright red and all the clips and buckles are painted in silver very nice now to have the figure equip this accessory it's rather simple actually all you have to do is just have him wear it like so and there you have it he is done now let's take a look at the figure's paint job now majority of the figure's colors are not really painted all it's just pure plastic colors only on certain parts of the area like the stripes the red stripes on the arms red stripes on the legs the pouches here are painted this entire knife sheath here is painted in black with the buckle here are painted in silver the lower section of the leg is painted in dark blue but this section of the boots here are pure plastic color there's a nice little Cobra logo on the chest here the collar button here is painted in silver the entire head is of course painted as you can see it's made of a dark blue plastic material the neck there is also painted the hair is painted in dark brown the fl flesh tone skin is painted nicely however a little bit of smudge but once you place the helmet onto the figure you are barely able to notice it eyebrow is painted the eyes as well and he's wearing a red mask very nice however it's nothing new on this figure for the mold itself it's basically the same being reused so many times just like the cobra officer or the cobra trooper so there's no need for me to go too much details onto this because basically it's the same old mold there and there's not much of changes on the mold itself but I do want to complete a few things first things first we'll take a look at the figure's articulation the head can actually pivot up and down a little bit and turn 360 degrees also here can pivot forward a little bit back a little bit and turn 360 degrees shoulders here can turn 360 degrees and lift the shoulders this high and elbow joint here can move forward back and turn 360 degrees wrist joint here can turn 360 degrees now what I really hate is the wrist joint here first of all the hand the gripping hand is widened up too wide so it barely able to hold the submachine gun you can actually fix this quite easily with hot water or well hot air now the problem with the wrist itself the peg that connects to the lower arms there the peg is a bit tan I would say loose so sometimes it can easily pop off from the hand at the time it was just prone to easily breakage speaking of breakage the moment I took this figure out from the packaging this left wrist was at the near point of breaking it was hanging by a thread so I have to use a glue to fix it up now the waist joint here or the hip joints I mean the hip joints the cuts of the hips itself is not deep enough so when you move the legs forward you tend to spread the legs pretty far and when you try to place the figure into the cobra fang itself you have to really adjust it because it's really pain to have the figure sit properly with well if it can even sit inside at all with the legs being stretched really far so yes the leg can move forward back a little bit and to the sides then we have double jointed knee that bend this far and finally we have the ankle joint that pivots downwards upwards and then 360 degrees the problem with the ankle joint here is the peg that support to, to the lower legs itself is a bit too thin and when the figure 
first came out from the box itself or the packaging or whichever depending on which Cobra Trooper that you bought or Cobra Officer you bought sometimes the ankle joint tend to freeze up yes it tends to freeze up and when you try to bend it you, it seems like you're going to break the peg that connects to the lower leg so you have to do it really extra careful and slow otherwise you'll just break off that peg immediately because it's being supported by this very thin lower ankles as you can see here so you have to be extra careful with that other than that the figure is nothing really spectacular it's nothing that's interesting he doesn't come with even a knife and the worst thing is is his wrist joint his ankle joints and then finally we have the cut areas on the crotch area so if I'm gonna give a rating for this figure I say I give it a 3 out of 10 yes a 3 out of 10 for the Cobra pilot now let's take a look at the Cobra Fang and now it comes with a nice little file card here now the file card at the top section here stated Cobra Fang type rotary aircraft designation gyrocopter now its weapons 85mm rapid fire cannon and heat seeking rockets you got a nice little image of the Cobra Fang there now in the write up stated Fang the Fang bracket fully armed negator gyrocopter and bracket aircraft is like a hummingbird with a bad attitude pan down to the essentials it's still a formidable attack vehicle for its size and design it carries strut mounted rockets and an 85 millimeter rear mounted cannon and open cockpit leaves the pilot vulnerable to enemy fire but allows for a more comprehensive appraisal of the target or battle situation Cooper fang crafts are used for air support singly or in teams they harass the enemy with nuisance fire or launches airstrikes in coordination with a larger aerial force very nice and at the back here is all black now for the Cobra Fang it also comes with an instruction manual now the back of section of the instruction manual is all blank the front section especially the top section here dictates the listing of the Cobra Fang Techno Babel. Bottom section of the instruction manual here you've got a nice little image to show that how and where to place the figure onto the vehicle itself and where to place the bombs and missiles. And yes the picture shows the Cobra pilot. Here is an instruction list on where to place the stickers and there's a lot of stickers for the Cobra Fang itself totaling up to 33 stickers as you can see here and there's quite a number of stickers that are still left on the sheet itself because this remaining stickers needed to place onto round surfaces like the rockets and the missiles and for these stickers they, to they don't even stick onto the rockets and missiles especially because they are actually on a round base itself so it tends to to have the sticker peel off by its own so I'd rather not play, apply the stickers onto the missiles and bombs now let's take a look at the Cobra Fang now the Cobra Fang here is a very very nice vehicle first things first so let's take a look at the colors applied onto the Cobra Fang there is no paint job at all this entire Cobra Fang is pure plastic color we got gray, red, black plastic material all over for the Cobra Fang no paint job at all the rest are just sticker application there now what's interesting is let's take a close look at the vehicles well features this is a gyrocopter so yes the entire blade actually spins very nicely and that's not all the back portion of the tail fin if you spin the peg itself you basically spin the tail fin as well very nice then we have his rear mounted cannon which is on a ball joint as you can see you can aim it in whatever direction that you want to very nice then we have four detachable rockets but they have a really hard time trying to stay onto the pegs itself because it really pops off quite easily as you can see there 
I really hate the small little pinks. I really wish that the missiles, the holes are deep enough so you can actually really place them in. But the rockets are the first thing that pops up the moment you touch it. Then at the bottom we have the bomb, which is also removable accessory. Like so, very nice. Now let's take a look at the details for the Cobra Fang. Now the mode for the Cobra Fang here, it does not use the 1983 mode. It does based on the design, but it does not use the 1983 because the 1983 Cobra Fang does not and will not able to fit the 25th anniversary figure. It's not compatible at all. So they have to retool the original mode and this is a 2008 Cobra Fang mold because the cockpit is large enough for the figure to sit in. Very nice. Also, you get to see the back engine here. There's a lot of nice details in the back portion of the engine. Very nicely done. There's also the gas pump here as well. Very nice. However, the bottom section, there's not a lot of details going on. But I really like the Cobra Fang. It is a very nostalgic, very nostalgic vehicle itself. And of course, you've got a nice look rotary blade going on very nice now let's place the pilot onto the Cobra Fang now as I mentioned before due to the cut of the crotch area the Cobra pilot would have a hard time trying to sit into the cockpit quite well one last thing that I forgot to mention is that the handlebar here is adjustable as you can see here so I like in a you know on a ball joint but you cannot twist the entire thing actually that's a small little pick for you to plug in the figure as I mentioned before the missile tends to pop off quite easily and it frustrate me to no end at all I just really hate it now let's place the figure inside as I mentioned before due to the low cut of the crotch area itself it has a hard time trying to well adjust the figure properly as you can see there and yes the missile just pop off again this is the most annoying the most frustrating and annoying accessory for a vehicle because it does not stay on there you go as you can see the figure is barely able to sit properly because I already plugged the peg onto the back portion of the figure itself but due to the cut itself the legs and everything can't actually sit all the way in you can still try to adjust it but you need some time any other figures with a lot of cut onto their crotch areas will have no problem sitting onto the Cobra Fang itself be it for example well the Cobra Viper but for a Cobra Trooper it has quite a difficult time trying to sit onto the cockpit itself as you can see there overall I really like the vehicle the vehicle is very nostalgic very nicely done I really hate the missiles the missiles is so easily loosened up hence why back then in 1983 the missiles are the first thing to go missing because it doesn't stay onto the vehicle very well yes so if I'm going to give a rating of the Cobra Fang, it's still a very nice vehicle, I just, I just don't like the missiles. If I'm going to give a rating on this, I say it's a very nice vehicle, I'll give it a nice 8 out of 10. Yes, a nice 8 out of 10 for the Cobra Fang. And I thank you all for watching, this is Lucy05 and I'm signing off.